Okay, here we are on our sec second lecture of the CryEngine programming series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor here at SNHU, Southern New Hampshire University. And our, our next lecture is on the simplest possible flow graph we can have. And uh, that's uh, CryEngine flow graph program lecture two, the most basic flow graph. And there's a reason for doing it this way. Um, you create the most basic flow graph possible. And doing this will be done to give you a quick overview of the major steps involved in creating an operational flow graph. Okay, so that's the purpose of the lecture. If you'd like to follow along, that would be great. Or you just want to sit and take some notes, that's fine too. OK, now this is just a, a quick review. Remember how you open the flow graph. Uh, you went to the main editor window and you looked over here at where the FG was and you clicked on it and then up pop your flow graph and remember to be sure to go to file new uh, in order to do that if it's a new flow graph which in this uh, lecture it is so that'll activate your main uh, window here. Okay, forget to do that won't be activated. All right, and what we want to do is we want to right-click, as we did before, on the main editing pane to bring up the menu and uh, because we want to put a node in there. And we're going to select the Add Start node. And this is sort of a review of what we had in our, in our first lecture. Okay, now that we've done that, we see that we have the Add Start node, uh, the Game Start node. The output port will become active, which is this port right here, when the game starts. Note that when you roll your mouse over the blue output port, a pop-up message comes here that says that the output is Boolean, which means that it's either going to be uh, true or false. And the blue port indicates that the data type is of type Boolean. Okay, it's either going to be true or false. So obviously when the game starts, this output is going to become true, and that's what we're looking for. Now, what we want to do next is we want to, uh, uh, oh, let's skip that. That's an old one. Uh, we want to dis select the display message node. Uh, the display message node is a powerful debugging and design tool. We'll use it a lot. You'll use it a lot. It's a way of testing your flow graph design actually to test exactly what is or is not getting activated in your flow graph. So the way we get to it is we use our, our pop-up menu when we right click. We're going to add the node and we scroll down here to the debug and then on the debug uh, we have all of these different nodes that we can use and we want to use the display message node. So that's the one that we're going to click on. Now when we do that up comes our display message node, which is under the, in the debug category. And there's two things we want to change. We want to change the message. We want to add hello world with an exclamation mark. And we want to change the font size to 9. And the way we do that, we come over here on the input parameters. And this we <coughs> if we click on this and, and hold the mouse over it, it'll tell us that it's a string message, hello world and display this message on the heads-up display. So it tells you what it is. So I simply typed in hello world here, clicked on it, typed in hello world. I changed the font size. The default is a 2. It's pretty small. I changed, bumped that up to a 2. So those are the two parameters that I changed. Keep in mind, you have to click on this node to activate it, and then the input ports will be available here, and their parameters can be changed. So a green port as we see here, these green ports, that means a, a, a data type string, okay? Uh, okay, so now we go to the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now we have the output port. Um, means any, uh, I'm sorry, the green means any uh, data type. I, I said string, it really doesn't. 
means any data type. I can put any data type into the green ports here or any data, get any data type out of here. So that makes it very flexible. Okay, I thought I made a, a goof on that. So here I have a Boolean data type going to the green uh, show uh, uh, data type, which will take any data type. And the way I did that, I went from the output port here, held down my mouse, my left mouse button, and dragged this arrow over here to the show. And so that's how I connect it. So now when the game plays, when the game starts, it will tell this um, input port on this node, on the display message node, to show the message. Okay. And, and I guess what that will do for us, that will tell us that the game start uh, node is working. All right, so now I go to the main editing wi window and left click on it to activate it. There's my main editing window. And once I click on it, I'm going to do a control G. And when I do a control G, uh, that gets me into the game. And what I see here now is the message, hello world. Well, when I see that message, that tells me that the start uh, uh, node is working correctly. It also tells me that the display message node is working. So you will now see the message, hello world, you typed in the message port parameter of the display message node in your graph. Uh, and this is, again, the very simplest type of example that, that we can have. Okay. What I want to do here is I want to add a comment. It's good practice to add comments to your flow graph. And you want to use these to help remind you of the important details that are necessary to understand the purpose of your flow graph. Programmers use comments when they, when they write programming code. Uh, the there's a lot of reasons for it. One of the main reasons when they come back to it weeks or months later to modify or update or whatever the case may be, uh, it's a memory jog. That, oh, yeah, that's why I did this. So you want to add a comment to any of your flow graphs that you have. And the way you do it is you go uh, and you right click on the screen here and uh, you get the, the pop up menu. You put add comment and you can, there's three different kinds of comments which we'll cover, but right now we're just going to add a simple comment. Okay. And when you do that, you'll see a little pop up window that says this is the comment. All you need to do is go over this and type in what your comment is and then uh, press the enter key. So now there is your comment. My first flow graph shows a simple message when the game starts. And you can see there is the game start uh, node here. There's the output port connected to the input port of the debug message. This is a Boolean type. And as we saw when I corrected myself, this takes any kind of data type. Okay. Now, another important part of this is be sure to save your completed flow graph. Obviously, you go to File and you go to Save As. Now, here's an important point that many people aren't too aware of. Flow graphs are saved as XML files. You'll see that it's saved as .xml. What I did is I made the name of my flow graph the message using camel case. That is, the first letter of the word is lowercase, and then any other words within that uh, the, the first letter is always capitalized. So we'll learn about XML files in this lecture series and how to use them to fine tune your, uh, your flow graph. Okay. Um, thanks for your attention uh, on this lecture. Uh, I'll be, after this lecture is over, I'll be happy to answer questions or go back and review any section of this. That's it for this lecture too.